In today's video, I will be showing you how I replace the connectors on the Apple Watch Series 4. Uh, the customer uh, had done some damage. We'll talk a little bit more about what they had done. As you can see there, this is the new connector that we'll be using. We'll also be replacing the Force Touch. You can see there that the connector was torn. We'll also uh, be installing a new screen. Let's get started. <laughs> So the first thing that I'm going to do is remove this little screw that holds down the bracket for the uh, force touch sensor. Turns out there is super glue um, that's holding that screw in. I'm having to scrape away that. I'm adding some acetone to help loosen it up. It took me a little bit of time but I finally got it. What had happened is the customer had broken their screen and they decided to fill the gaps in the, the cracks with some super glue to hope the hopefully seal it maybe from the elements but noticed that the super glue was simply disappearing and uh, soon thereafter the device stopped working and so they decided to try to take it apart and uh, everything was basically glued down you can see there I tried to disconnect the connector there and it simply just broke in half leaving it on there uh, still on there next I'm gonna add some alcohol here I've got a a pry tool that's from uh, Zach from Jerry Rig Everything. I'll add some alcohol into the battery and pry it up. Pull away the sticker and unscrew the screw there that holds down the bracket for the battery connector and pop that battery connector up. Next, I'm going to remove the uh, the force touch, uh, what's remaining of it. This is basically the bottom half, the uh, top half. Uh, delaminated as they pulled off the screen. Next I'm going to add a little bit more alcohol and we're going to pull off the sticker that's covering up the solder joints to the uh, connector that we're going to be replacing. There was a bunch of super glue there on the side so I'm going to pick at it see if I can get rid of it. Now I'm going to add some flux to help uh, when I apply the new solder. I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of solder to each one of the pads. This will help me uh, flow the solder joints uh, as I remove it to make sure that I don't pull any pads off the board. Next I'm going to take uh, my soldering iron with a, 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 a ball of solder and I'm going to gently push it against each one of those pads and and give the the, uh, the connector a, a little bit of tension not a lot but a little bit and as I heat up each one of those joints it'll flow through and allow it to start to separate this is something you have to be very careful of you can't pull too hard um, but if you don't pull hard enough you're gonna just sit there with your iron all day and if it gets stuck in one spot where it's not working it's most likely because your flux has been burnt so you can simply add more flux. You can clean it first if you like, but not necessary. The flux tends to clean itself as, uh, as I do this. We'll go ahead and go all the way to the other side. and Make sure it's separated entirely. And then we'll remove this bracket. And taking out the two screws that hold it in. This bracket's for the, uh, the power button there. And it was super glued to the frame, so I had to kind of pop it away. Luckily, this connector didn't see any super glue. I'm going to add a little more flux and clean up any excess solder that's on the pads. Also, checking to make sure that all the pads are still intact and it looks great. Add some alcohol and clean up the flux and uh, adhesive residue from the old connector. Then we'll go ahead and try to pry up the, the rest of that force touch connector. It was so glued on there. Like the, when that one kid was dared to stick their tongue on a metal pole in the middle of winter. Here you can see the new adhesive 
and the other side with both connectors there. There's two guide points, one on either side. There are little windows that you can look through and see the little squares on the, the board and to line it up. Another thing that helps to line this connector up is to flex the cables and to also connect the connector there. It'll help line up the sides. Once you have it lined up and you can see the little squares through the windows, I go ahead and tack down that side. We'll adjust the other side and do the exact same thing. Once I'm content with where it's at, I'll go ahead and tack down a few of the connectors. And then wherever I feel like it, I'm going to go ahead and tack down, just making sure we, I can uh, see the solder flow through each one of those holes in each joint. The next step is simply going to go over each hole and flow the solder that was uh, left over from below up through the hole and uh, making sure that it has a solid joint. As you can see I'm not applying any extra solder and my soldering iron tip is clean. Basically I'm just allowing whatever solder was there to, to flow up through the hole. That way I know that there is a solid joint and it'll help uh, uh, basically make sure that when I'm done with this repair there won't be any issues in the future. We'll go ahead and add some alcohol and clean up the connector and then I'm going to check and make sure it looks flush everywhere and to be safe I'm going to add some more flux and we're going to go through and uh, touch up each of the point again I'll go through this do one side and go through the whole thing and there we are now on the other side touching up all the points I'm doing this under my microscope so I can see that each connect uh, connection is solid then we'll clean up the residue from the uh, the old flux. I like to make sure that this is super clean so that our sticker that we pulled off earlier has the best chance of sticking when we put it back. Then we'll peel off the little protector for the adhesive for the force touch sensor there. Some of this some of the glue is still left over there, so I'm going to pick at that and see if I can get rid of it. That'll help that connector line up a little bit better. Next we'll go ahead and install the battery again by connecting the Lego style connector there. Take the bracket and the screw that hold those uh, that connector down. We'll stick it in there. Screw in the screw and put the little sticker back over to protect it. And then we'll put the bracket back in on the other side for the power button section. Then we'll go ahead and put the battery back in. Make sure it's centered and pushed down. Then we'll take the new force touch and we'll Peel off the protection for the new adhesive that's under it to uh, put on the frame. But I noticed that we have an issue with the frame. It still has super glue all over it. I'm going to go ahead and try to scrape it off and clean it up. Take a little bit of alcohol. scrub at that. Now you could use acetone to uh, help loosen up the, uh, the super glue. However, acetone doesn't play well with most of the stuff in this device and so I don't want to get close to any of it and have any of the acetone run down in it. Now alcohol running down in it isn't going to do anything negative so I'll go, I'm totally fine doing that. Then we'll go ahead and uh, install it. But I noticed again something's wrong. I've got dents on most of the corners. I'm going to go ahead and take care of those. Alright, now you can see the corners are all round again. We should be able to install the force touch. 
We make sure we put the cable on the correct side and then line up each corner and gently go around with the flat side of my tweezers and push down on the force touch, making sure it gets a good bond to the to the frame we just cleaned. We'll go and connect the, the connector for the force touch and get the little bracket and screw that go on top of it to push it down and keep it there intact. So put in the screw there. Make sure it's all there and then we're going to get our new screen and we'll connect our new screen. Flip up the tabs if they're not already flipped up. Gently walk the connectors in. Giving them enough slack to make sure we're not tugging at them in any way. And I leave them disconnected until I have all three connected because... Um, just in case it slips, I don't want a cable tearing again. We'll go ahead and flip the latches back down, make sure they're secured, and we'll try turning it on. Oh no. Just kidding, it needs to charge. Yeah. Adjust the light. There you can see it's charging. But this battery is really dead, so I had to wait quite some time. To, uh, to get to see it's turn on. There you can see we started at a 503, which not really 503, but uh, more like 10 p.m. <laughs> anyway, there it is coming on. We'll go ahead and test uh, touch functionality. Touch, touch looks great. We can see that the display is also working just fine. And here's one way to test touch, make sure everything's working, is to try to see if it'll release the uh, the power button as you move around. We'll also want to make sure force touch is working, so as long as I line up the display correctly, like that, there we go, you know it's working. There's the old screen and all the remnants of it. If you enjoyed uh, the video, feel free to like it. All I have to do now is put the screws back and uh, seal it down. Thanks for watching.